people asking questions about the products. I also need y'all to get back to y'all seats. Diabetes Fighter Manual. All right, so I'm gonna take y'all into the book a little bit. Um, when I say a little bit, time is not gonna actually permit us to go through all 545 pages. But I want y'all to understand that it is 545 pages in all of these books. All right, because I'm getting a lot of questions. Uh, Minister Angie, did you bring the uh, Black Genetics 1, 2, 3, etc., etc., the Diabetes Manual? Do you have them in print? Um, this book, I think, is online for 50 bucks. Um, we have the, the Live It for Light Bodies, which is the diet book. A lot of people are familiar with the 40-day fast. We also have the plan for everyday eating. Um, that's also on the website, 40dayfoodfast.com. But these, all these books are free for the people in the class. Because that's, that's what's more important. It's cool to come out to stuff like this, but, you know, I, I, I've been in the seat before. So I know, you know, almost 70% of what we see today might be like Chinese. Sounds good, but we don't really study it on a day-to-day -day basis to really understand how to incorporate what it is that we're learning in our life. We don't understand it well enough to go back home, even though we get excited, and teach it to our family members and our friends and our children and our parents and our uncles and our aunts enough to get them excited. We can't convey that electricity about the information. So then when you try to get them to come out or you try to get them to change the diet, you, it's like you're just talking to the wall. But it's because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. You have to take the information to the next level. That's why you're in front of it. You have to embody the science to the point that you can teach it, to the point that you can represent it. That's the main thing why we're here. Now we do need to collect a few dollars so we could pay for the, you know, so if you got it, you know, we, we're going to need to get a few dollars about you, right? Um, but if you don't, we just wanted to have you here because we wanted to make sure that um, Francis Cress Wilson, which is, a, a, she had a big influence on me. I wanted to make sure that her work is remembered and that her legacy doesn't go in vain, and it will go in vain if we're not doing the work ourselves. If we're happy with catchphrases like alkaline, pH, vegan, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going vegan. What you going vegan for? You don't even know. Most people going vegan and vegetarian still have the same issues as they was meat eaters. Because they don't know what vegetables to eat, what fruits to eat. They don't know how to put their meals together. Why? Because they don't know how their body works. You didn't do the right steps first. The right steps first is to learn your body first. Then the other questions, you, you won't even have some of the questions that you think you have in your mind. Because once you know how your body works, then you know what the food consists of and what it does then the answers come all by itself. Oh, I know what I'm supposed to eat because I'm trying to do this. Because everybody sitting in this room probably has a different goal for where they want their health to go. Period. <clears throat> KT is more smooth with it. You know, he asks people in the room, how many people know somebody with diabetes? <laughs> 
Me, I would have been asking how many of you niggas have diabetes. <laughs> because that's, that's where we're at. Some of us want to gain a little weight. Some of us want to lose a little weight. But some of us is on medication. And some of us are not on medication, but we should be on medication. You're not okay just because you're not on medication. Oh, I got high blood pressure, but you know I don't trust them doctors, so I'm not taking anything for it, minister. You know how we do. No, I don't. You need to do something. You're going to wake up in the, you're just going to not wake up one day. The problem doesn't go away because you ignore it. It gets worse. We're not at that level yet. You know, we look back at the, the great civilizations and we're like, oh yeah, well they had the mental power and all is mental and you know, we're going to mentally... No, we're not. We're not those folks. You're not going to think away diabetes. <laughs> You're not going to think away a cancer. That's right. You have to get to work. And getting to work is not with your wallet and your purse. That's a tool to help you get to work. A lot of people want to buy away disease. Because they got money, so you know, oh yeah, well, you know, I know Inky got it, so you know, if something happened, you know, I'm going to go ahead and bring Inky down, and, you know. Give me a little flight out to Honduras, go see Savy for a couple weeks. You know, I'm going to be good. You might not be. You might not be. <coughs> you might have let it progress too far. The tissue, regener the, the tissue degeneration might be too far gone. And then your body has a thing where everything is being recorded into your DNA. The, the, the very first person outside of my aunt whose cancer I reversed. She was a personal friend of mine. She was my music manager when I was going hardcore with the music. I was doing this before I was even trying to do this for people. She came down with cancer. And we fought tooth and nail. <laughs> reversed it. Got it beat. So she thought it was a joke afterwards. Her name is Jessica. I ain't gonna give you her last name because she's still in the entertainment business. But she thought it was a game after. Like, no, no, no. Inky got this. We tr trust me. I was fighting with the doctors for five years. Me and Inky in three months we beat that cancer. Right after she went to the hospital and they said that there was no more traces of cancer, she was back at the nightclub drinking Pinot Grigio, her favorite wine, <laughs> leaving the club because she manages artists. Four o'clock in the morning, online at Wendy's, Burger King, etc., etc. Four months later, cancer came right back. Stronger than the first time. Why? Because now you're much more susceptible <laughs> because you got that code in there. So you can't think that you're going to have a problem, beat it, and then go back to the same way that you was living before because that problem's going to hit you again harder than it did the first time. These have to be lifetime changes that last Forever. I'll be ready to slap people. Minister, how long should I take the herbs? Forever, nigga. <laughs> how long do you want to live? I don't know. Sands. Drinking this water. How long we got to do that? Huh? Water? I'm like, yo, you just got to read, brother. Like, I, I, that's the solution. You got to read. So, the, uh, the course is called the God Complex course. If you get, get enrolled, get your people enrolled. It's a correspondence course. You go at your own speed, right? Because I know we got jobs, we got children, we got other things that we're doing. Um, it's at 40dayfruitfast.com. This is the Diabetes Fighter Manual. And the reason why I named it the Diabetes Fighter Manual as the subtitle, we'll get to the title, but as the subtitle is because diabetes is the way that the mass genocide of black people 
has been hidden right in public view. And I'm going to show you through the science how it is strictly an attack on your genetics. Strictly an attack on your genetics. Um, I wish I had the video. I think I might have the video queued up in here somewhere. But there's a, a, a white lady and she did a lecture and basically, you know, because black folks, we sometimes need to hear things from white folks for it to click. She did a lecture and she was talking about milk, how they were creating type 2 diabetes with irradiated milk. And how diabetes had nothing to do with genetics because that's what we're told. High blood pressure runs in the family. Diabetes runs in the family. Nothing runs in the family except pork and chicken. <laughs> That's what runs in the family. Pork, chicken, uh, red number 40, blue number one, all of these different things that we are killing ourselves with on a day-to-day -day basis. But she killed the whole argument in like less than one minute because type 2 diabetes is not a massive problem in Africa. So the very same Western scientists that would tell you you come from Africa, that's where your lineage comes from, will also tell you that type 2 diabetes runs in your family. However, it didn't start there. So you have to ask yourself, if it is running in the family, when did it start running in the family? And why is it that it's just attacking you, type 2 diabetes? That's one of the big differences between type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is predominantly a European problem. Type 2 diabetes, black folks. Type 1 diabetes, autoimmune disease. White blood cells, as he showed you, are attacking the beta cells inside the pancreas. Type 2 diabetes, Lack of knowledge. That's it. Lack of knowledge attacking that ass. <laughs> right? So, swaj. This is an ancient Egyptian uh, a comedic word that means greening. All right? It has two meanings. Two green, and the word green is used as a verb, a process. It's not used as a static color like we use it, green. It's used as a verb. It also means to flourish, to become healthy, because that's what that meant. To green meant to become healthy, right? Now, in translation, this word means to heal. So you might look it up some places and see that the word means to heal. But if you go back to the original translation, it meant to green. And so we'll get into that why that means that and we'll go into the product, the histonic, exactly uh, what the histonic does and some of the deeper applications. All right? Now, this is a look at what Brother KT was just talking to you about with the actual video animation. But I like to pull it up and leave it static for you so that you can see. There is literally almost no difference between your blood cell and a plant cell, save this guy right here, magnesium. Now this is very important, very important. Because a lot of people are putting things online about how they're curing cancer and they're curing this and they're curing that by going green. So what that means is that they're flooding their body with magnesium. And not just magnesium, magnesium enzymes. See, that's the difference between getting, going to GNC or the vitamin shop and just say, oh, well, magnesium's a trick. I'm just going to get magnesium pills. Yeah, but there's no living enzymes in those pills. And I'm not talking about probiotics. You got to knock off the probiotics, black folks. Probiotics is not for you. Okay? I know. Somebody told you probiotics was good, so you was buying $30 bottles of probiotics. 
Probiotics is nothing but milk fungus. That's where they get it from. And if you look to the stories about the origin of probiotics, they'll tell you about some old, long-living white folks that were eating raw, uh, si drinking sour milk and, and rotten yogurt. That's not you. This is why you got to learn you. Because you're going to follow Dr. Oz and waste a whole bunch of money buying up a whole bunch of products and still be <coughs> in the state that you're in. Worse. Worse. Because you're going to exacerbate the problems you have. You don't need lactobacillus and all kinds of crazy foolishness. That's not for you. It doesn't make sense to know that black folks are 95% lactose intolerant and then go get lactose concentrate. That's what that is. You're getting the active enzymes from the milk and the yogurt. The main thing your body likes to reject in a concentrated form now. Because somebody said it was probiotics. It was probiotics. Probiotics made by the same folks give you antibiotics. <laughs> From the people. <laughs> but this is why I'm out. People seeing me now, and people are bugging. The last couple of months, people been seeing me. They like, yo, where's your products, nigga? Like, no, I'm making a point to show you. Products are gonna disappear. <laughs> I need you to get this knowledge. It's not about following me or KT or Sabi or whoever's the next person when we stop. Because you're never in control. You're never in control. You got to take somebody's word for it. <clears throat> Personality worship. Oh, I'm feeling such and such, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and try that. Dr. Oz, he sound good. You know, he's a real doctor too, so I'm gonna go ahead and try that. No. You have to know how your body works so that you can put the things in it to get it to go where you want it to go. Right? So, magnesium and magnesium based enzymes. That is the process of greening. All right? That is the secret to greening. Now, chlorophyll. Three different types of chlorophyll. You have chlorophyll class A, chlorophyll class B, and chlorophyll class C. Class B and C are chlorophylls that are concentrated by bacteria that live in the ocean. In the ocean. So they don't concentrate the, the sunlight at the top. Those are things like spirulina. You have algae that lives on top of the water, like chlorella. That's where you get chlorophyll class A. Your body has an affinity to the sun. You need chlorophyll A. There are other people whose bodies don't have an affinity for the sun. They can't break them down as well. So they need chlorophyll class B and C, i.e. the reason why spirulina is so popular. Because the larger health movement is driven by Europeans. It's not driven with you in mind. We're at McDonald's. We're at the Chinese restaurant. We're at the buffet. Those things are created with you in mind. That's why in our neighborhoods they're not putting vegan and vegetarian restaurants. That's why the smoothie bars look like huts. You go in most of the cities where black folks are, when they got the smoothie bar, shit look like the ceiling caving in, everything. You go downtown where it's Chinese folks, white folks, the smoothie bar looks like a spa. Ah. They, got, they got oil, they got oil uh, nebulizing all kinds of shit when you walk in. Why? Because of the knowledge. Once you know what certain things do to your body, your priority about how you go about acquiring them changes. This is why when he talked about the resveratrol packages, I was just like, I'm waiting to get to the price part. 
because they can't sell enough of them and they're selling them at seven thousand ten thousand and fifteen thousand dollars people go into business to make money they wouldn't be selling them for ten thousand dollars a pop if no one was buying but they're buying because they know what's in there and they got the information from your ancestors right this guy who know who's this guy? Anybody? Asar. And Asar, or uh, probably no, Asar is the, you know, it's, it's kind of the, the watered down, the, the correct uh, name is Usir, right? But what color is Usir? Green. Green. But what is he known for? What is he known as? The perfect black. Think about that right there. That almost says it all right there. We could just pack up this lecture and go right to Q&A behind that. The perfect black is green. The perfect black is green. But his story, his story is that he civilized the planet and in civilizing, you have to clean up. That's the first part to civilizing is cleaning. Before we can teach you anything, we got to clean you up. Because if you're full of viruses and bacteria, I'm not even going to stand in proximity to, of you to teach you anything. <laughs> so he civilized the planet with the purple grape. The purple grape. So for years, ever since then, everybody's been at that grape trying to figure out what that meant. Where's the science in there? Where's the science in there? Right? So we're going to get to that science that's in there. Type 2 diabetes has been used as a huge cover-up, blah, 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 to attack the liver and the kidneys. The liver and the kidneys, very important. This destroys the body's pigment centers with the accumulation of sulfur thiols and ammonia-based compounds. That's what we need to talk about. These are the guys that are causing all the damage associated with the variety of illnesses that come from the attack on our liver and kidneys. And it's a wide variety. A wide variety. If you've seen the movie Concussion, then you know the confusion that the doctors were having is that when they looked at the actual um, slices of the brains under the microscopes, they immediately said, oh, no, we know what this is. We, 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 yeah, this is dementia. Oh, no, no, we know what this is. This is Parkinson's. Oh, no, 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 we know what this is. This is Alzheimer's. Then Will Smith was like, no, this is uh, 35 and 40-year-old people. Like, oh, let's look again. Well, how's that happening? <clears throat> the concussions are causing it, the blow, the contact. So you know I'm being an inky vision. I'm like, well, wait. Why is it acceptable to happen to 60, 70 year old folks? What's causing it then? Why is it that when people have liver failure, they have the same damage in the brain? Why is it that people on dialysis machines have the same damage in the brain? Because when you look at diseases, you got to know the first thing to understand in illnesses and how they play on words with you is that these things are just groups of symptoms. So when you hear the word diabetes, that's just a group of symptoms for damage that's going on in your body that they've grouped together. Period. CTE. All these things are outside groups of symptoms that they've just put in a word so that you know when they reference the word they're talking about the group of symptoms. But you can come about that damage a variety of ways. A variety of ways. So people that have diabetes don't all get type 2 diabetes the same way. Everybody's not in Krispy Kreme. Some people get type 2 diabetes from alcohol. Popping bottles, right? We like to do that. Everybody gets it from alcohol. <laughs> they just don't know it. They just don't know it. So there's a variety of ways we can get to this same situation. 
And this is also what's causing our athletes to get injured so fast. This is what's making the tissues, the bones, and the muscles so brittle. It's what's making it so difficult for people that are trying to lose weight to lose weight. Minister, I done, I done switched my diet six months. I'm fasting. I'm in the gym. But I, I, it's just not working. Because you have a cascade of hormones being produced in your cells by adipose tissue along with these ammonia-based compounds that's creating more fat and destroying the muscle in your body faster than you can build it. <laughs> time I'm going to skip through some of this stuff. Like I said, I got to skip through some stuff. But greens, this was the food of the gods. Horus, Set, that's what they ate. Greens. The sex god. Men. Lettuce. Lettuce. And when the Greeks, the Europeans at the time, when they came in, they found out about the power of the greens. And that's how one type of green became known as romaine lettuce, Roman lettuce. Because that was the main plant that we was using for fertility. For men to be potent and for women to be fertile. That's why when you go get your salads, iceberg lettuce they put on there. Iceberg ain't got nothing happening with it. But if you want to get some romaine lettuce, then you got to get what type of salad? Caesar's. Caesar's. Mm. Of Gotta get the Caesar salad. Hearts, hearts of romaine. Heart, exactly. And it's loaded with cheese. <laughs> so they making sure they neutralizing the effects that you would get by putting the cheese and the bread in there and mixing it in with the, with the greens. Right? Alright. So, real quick. What is an acid? I need y'all to get this. All right? An acid is a chemical substance that neutralizes alkaline. All right? Battery acid. It is a sulfur-based acid. Just need you to get that. That's all I need you to know. Battery acid is a sulfur-based liquid. All right? Lemon juice. Citric acid is a weak organic acid with the formula Six carbons, eight uh, hydrogens, seven oxygens, etc., etc. Lemon juice, citric acid. Why is that important? I need you to know that all acids are not acids in the way that you think. Because a lot of us are getting caught up in these trendy terms and we don't really understand them. So we're running from everything acid and running to everything alkaline. And it doesn't work that way. Pool water. Dirty, pissy, dirty diaper pool water is alkaline. I need you to get that. When you go to the supermarket, Clorox bleach is alkaline. $2 yellow ammonia is alkaline. Citric acid is the number one energy source in your body. When your body breaks down fat into sugar, then it uses that sugar in the process of making energy. It turns it into citric acid before it can, use. It can be used. This is why these are tropical fruits are loaded with citric acid because that's your diet. All right. I got a question about citric acid. By the um, way, the the citric acid that they sell in uh, Whole Foods, the uh, white powder, what substance is? What is? What is Listen, that compared oh, to? What? We going to just, <laughs> your answer was in the question. I know. By now, black folks should know not to trust no white powder. <laughs> Anytime white folks done popped up with white powder for us, it didn't work out. <laughs> Every time. Cocaine, heroin, protein, whey powder, flour, right? All the above. All right, so... Balance, all right? Balance between acids and alkalines. Now, okay, I'm gonna need to go back there because I want y'all to get this, all right? I want y'all to get some information on melanin today that is not really popularly taught. So a lot of people have a misunderstanding of what that is, and before we get a good idea of how the brain works, we have to understand this very special pigment. 
All right? So, European physiology versus human physiology. Major differences in internal chemistry for you to be aware of. All right? Melanin inhibitors versus melanin promoters. This is enzyme activity. All right? So, European bodies are loaded with enzymes that destroy pigment. That's why they don't have it. Your body is loaded with enzymes that promote pigment. That's where the conflict of interest is. All right? Galactose production and utilization. When you see somebody with very little skin pigment, it's because the white blood cells have control of the outer layers of their body and galactose is not being utilized. Galactose is the sugar that binds melanin to the adult stem cells that we know of as skin cells. Every one of your skin cells is an adult stem cell called the keratinocyte. So that's what melanocytes do in terms of how you get dark, how you get pigmented. Melanocytes, like horny men, you're looking for some fine sisters, aka keratinocytes, and they impregnate them with melanin. And it's the galactose that binds the melanin to the keratinocyte. All right? The same way that fertilized egg has to be binded to the wall of the uterus in order for it to take root and grow. Same way. All right? Same way. Now, ammonia, base compounds versus water utilization. We do not have an ammonia transport system in our body. Our body likes to use nitrogen, bind it with oxygen, create nitric oxide, and use that to build muscles and tissues. And that's how we get rid of ammonia-based compounds besides urine. It's a complete different process that's happening. All right? Pigment ratio, muscle tissue, fast twitch to slow twitch, bone marrow, stem cell density, uh, utilization of a dopamine versus adrenaline. This is important for our conversation today. All right, dopamine, who knows what dopamine is? Anybody, where is dopamine made at? Correct. Dopamine is not only made in the brain, but it's a precursor to neuromelanin. Adrenaline. Where is adrenaline made? In the pancreas? Is it the pancreas? <clears throat> Close. Is it the adrenal glands? Boom. The adrenal glands, for the, the, for the most part. Right? You have the adrenal cortex, so you get the signal from the brain. But the majority is produced in the adrenal glands. A lot of ours are blown out because marijuana blows out your adrenal glands. <laughs> Another conversation. <laughs> yes. Marijuana destroys your adrenal glands. Um, phenolics versus thiols. Thiols are uh, alcohols. These are plant-based compounds in the body. All right. The utilization of these separates our physiologies. Separates our physiologies greatly. So we're going to get a little bit deeper into these. So just just pin those, put them on the sidebar in your notes, and, and then we'll we'll come back to them. And I want y'all to get to this melanin, so. Let me skip down. I know y'all like, well, we want to go through everything. We don't have time for that. That's why we have the class. All right. Sulfur metabolism produces ammonia. This is what you need to know. Sulfur metabolism produces ammonia. Carbon oxidization produces carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a super highly poisonous gas. Anytime you oxidize a carbon-based compound, you're going to produce carbon monoxide. So all living organisms produce minute amounts of carbon monoxide 
that your body can take care of and excrete without too much damage. However, when your body starts to get loaded with ammonia-based compounds and sulfur-based compounds, the tissue oxidation rate goes up through the roof. As that rate goes up through the roof, the rate at which your body produces carbon monoxide goes up through the roof. This is the reason why our athletes all across all sports, and it's, it's primarily just the black athletes, they have these unexplainable migraine headaches that they don't know where they're coming from. And they blame it on dehydration. Oh yeah, well you just dehydrated, you need to drink some water. No, I just drank a gallon, coach. It's only 12 o'clock, I'm already a gallon in. It's because you're producing carbon monoxide and that's putting too much pressure on your brain. That's what you're feeling. All right? Oxygen, sulfur, and selenium. All three of these guys come from one family of elements. And it's very important for us to get that because sulfur is pheomelanin based. Selenium is what eumelanin utilizes to produce proteins and enzymes. And oxygen, obviously, we know is what we breathe in the body. But because these things all come from the same family of elements, they can all displace one another. And they all have binding affinity with pigment. Red pigment is composed of sulfur. The sulfur cycle blends with the ammonia cycle. We're going to get to that. I'm going to show you how this thing works so you can get this science. All right? Now, on a sidebar, just so that you understand why I'm showing you these things, is because this is how our bodies are being poisoned, and these are all of the things that we address in counteracting when we put together the histonic. The histonic breaks down and destroys the sulfur-based and ammonia-based <coughs> compounds. It reverses the damage of all of this carbon monoxide production. Excuse me. Fire away. It's too much pressure on the brain. Is that caused by overexertion? It's caused by who? Overexertion. Um, well, overexertion is what causes the oxidation rate to go up. So it's inadvertently definitely caused by overexertion. And later on, I'm going to show you exactly the parts of the brain that's being overexerted the substantia nigra and the locus ceruleus. Those are the two main areas that, especially for athletes, are targeted. Because the substantia nigra controls body movement, which is athleticism, reward, which is what drives the athleticism, and then the locus ceruleus controls that adrenal cortex with the fight or flight and the release of the adrenaline and nitrogen-based compounds and stuff like that. So we're gonna, we gonna get to it. All right? This is that family. This is that family. I just thought it was it, it's dope for you to know what the name of this family is called. Chalcogens. This is a Greek word meaning born of copper. Right? Born of copper. And I just told you that they all have a binding affinity with pigment. They all have a binding affinity with pigment. Right? And your pigment is all produced based on one key amino acid. Anybody? Except KT. Tyrosine. Tyrosine comes from this guy. This is why the family of these guys have an affinity for binding with the pigments. It's going back home to mama. Right? This is that family on the periodic table. Now when you get lower, a lot of these uh, elements are either not found um, very rarely or some of them are actually only created in the lab. So these are the only ones out of the family that's in popular circulation, especially in our food and air and water. Oxygen, sulfur, and selenium, but this is that family. All of these represent families, right? Let me see if I can get the joke a little sharper too. Man's kryptonite. You need to get this. The antagonist of Ray Wusir Patar transition metals groups. Wait a minute. Ray Wusir Patar transition metal group. 
Yeah, that's that's I made that up. Right? Why? Because you have Ray, Usia, and Patar right in the middle of the chart. Damn. Damn. Like, that's crazy. And these are your transition metals right here. And these are the guys that are required for your brain function. Starting right up top. Manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. Right here, the copper and zinc is our testosterone. Right? Then we come down, you got your cadmium, your, your, your silver, the most um, electrically conductive, etc., etc., your rhodium, iridium, ruthenium. Right? So, but these are your guys. And that sulfur is the antagonist for that group. That's how it destroys and breaks down that brain function. All right? So put that in your notes. All right? In particular, copper. Sulfur is an antagonist for copper. All right? It's an antagonist for copper, the major biological mineral in black genetics. Sulfur also acts, in many cases, as antagonist for selenium and calcium. Right? And I heard you say the fail melanin, when you break that down, is sulfur based, but <clears throat> you melanin uses selenium. Does that mean that it's not selenium based? No. Correct. Good, good, good timing on the question. So when you look at fail melanin, you can actually see the sulfur in the compound. But when you look at U melanin, you don't necessarily see selenium there. So a lot of people get that, I got a lot of people asking me that question. They're like, well, when I, you know, they just try to get, you know, you know, we, 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 we've created a debate climate now in the, in the, you know, so everybody, everything is about the dude. Minister, I didn't see any selenium in the. <laughs> Some minerals have an electric relationship with biological molecules, some have a magnetic. If it is inside, that's an electric. If it is outside, it's magnetic. All right? Two types of eumelanins, we need to know that too. There are two types of eumelanins. One type still has that carbolytic acid attached. That is the brown, that's our brown folks. That jet black does not have the uh, the carbolytic acid attached to it. Another another point with that selenium um, <clears throat> is the fact that most of the time these elements are used as a as a medium to get to a desired result. Meaning that when you get to the desired result, it don't necessarily have to have it in it. But the enzymes that are necessary to get there will have the chemical in there. So like the selenium the enzymes that are used in order to produce certain things have the selenium in it, but the final product doesn't, Correct. The, the medium. That's all enzymes do, speed things up or slow things down. And that's actually the difference between how skin melanin is produced and internal melanin or neuromelanin. So we're going to get to that too. You mentioned uh, carbonic acid. Is there a benefit to that? Uh, it, just, it, just, it just changes the electric affinity of the molecule. That's all. It changes the electric affinity of the molecule. What do you mean by that? Meaning, um, everything has a range of how much electricity it can hold and how much electricity went into it. So when you look at, um, for instance, neuromelanin. Neuromelanin is not produced with melanocytes. So that whole process that I talked about with the melanocyte and the skin, the, the adult stem cell, that doesn't take place inside your brain. The, act, the, the, the actual reduction of tyrosine in structured crystallized water, or, and for, for everybody, when you reduce something in science, you're adding more electricity to it. That's what takes it through its chain reactions instead of actually needing enzymes to speed up the process. It's electricity that does it directly. And so that's how neuromelanin is formed. And that's the difference. He's making me jump ahead. But that's the difference between 
um, African children and European children. That's why they learn faster. African babies are born with pigmented substantia nigris already. For European children, theirs doesn't become pigmented until between 18 and 24 months. All right. So now y'all can take pictures of this. I'm, I, I don't know how y'all would manage to take notes of this. But this is how you get through the process of the two different failed melanins and the two different new melanins. All right? There are two different ones. Now, here is the major thing that I discovered, and this bothered me for years. When I say years, this drove me crazy for years. I could not figure out for the life of me what happened to make fail melanin. Like if we start with tyrosine, and we have the same enzyme, tyrosinase, how is it that some people end up with fail melanin and sulfur stuck in there, you know, just, and then how is it that some of us wind up with the eumelanin? You know, what, what is that actual process? I wanted to really understand what that process was. And the craziest thing is there is no process. If sulfur alcohol is present in the liquid, you got to remember every enzyme, every amino acid activity, everything has to happen in a liquid medium. So, if we're dealing with highly structured water, you're going to get eumelanin. If we're dealing with sulfur-based alcohols, fail melanin. Period. We're talking about the, the medium that these things are created in. And it, and it plays a big role into what you're going to see happening in the deterioration of the brain, etc., etc. So people ask, um, even, um, how do I get my memory sharper? This is how you get your memory sharper. By understanding, A, those minerals I laid out, that, that Wu, Asa, Pata pathway, those transition minerals, getting those minerals in, that's what the four pack is for. But then enhancing the pigment to activate and utilize those things is what the histonic is for. That's what the histonic is for. All right? So we kind of went through this part already. Boy, over here, he sped us up. Right? So this is, this is your um, tyrosine. That's your oxygen, your dopa. Right? This is your enzyme, tyrosinase, bringing those things together, speeding up that process to produce dopa. Now, this is why crack, cocaine, heroin, etc., etc., this is why those are attacks on melanated people. Because all of those things do is activate and attack the dopamine centers in the brain. High doesn't happen from outside the body. It happens from inside the body. It's dopamine. That's why they, depending on where you're at, dope is always used as a nickname for drugs. So if you're in some cities, they say dope, they're talking about weed. you in New York, they say dope, they're talking about heroin. you in some places out west, they say dope, they're talking about angel dust. Dope is always the nickname. Why? It's because it attacks the dopamine centers of the brain and causes them to release an unnaturally high amount of dopamine. That's what makes you feel good. Dopamine is released after sex, if it was good sex. <laughs> right? You frustrated, then something else gets released. <laughs> Fight or flight, like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, there is no enzyme responsible for fail melanin production over you melanin. When sulfur alcohol or sulfur thiols are present, they react with dopaquinone without the aid of enzymes. Production of you melanin itself is proof positive of lack of sulfur thiols. I need you to get that. Production of you melanin itself is proof positive of lack of sulfur based thiols anywhere in the body where pigment is produced. Combination of nitrogen and UV radiation produce sulfur thiols in people in possession of phaeomelanin. So, 
if you have pheomelanin, anytime the sun hits you, it's going to produce more sulfur-based uh, alcohol in your body. Right here where that happens. And these are the sulfur-based compounds that are the guys, the stars of the show. Glutathione or cysteine. Glutathione or cysteine. Primarily cysteine. But glutathione is it's a co-defendant. Alright? When cysteine is exposed to peroxide and nitrogen or UV radiation, the end products are sulfuric acid and sulfur thiols, the same thing that's in your car battery. This only takes place in pheomelanin white blood cell dominated bodies. Now, sugar, glucose, I got you. I like to get blue -led. I'm not that guy. Some people lectures and be like, no questions. Don't pull out no camera. How are them folk gonna get out? <laughs> Trying to teach the people or what? So, this is your intestine, this is your liver. This is just a very easy breakdown so you can see um, sugar glucose trajectory without yeast. Meaning, this is the sugar breakdown process with glucose, etc., etc., uh, when you look in textbooks and things like that. But what they don't put in here is the effect of yeast and fungus in the body that most of us have. Because once you add yeast and fungus, that's when you get the production of alcohol inside your body. And that's what the brother KT was alluding to earlier when I was saying that um, a lot of us can get type 2 diabetes from popping bottles. And he was like, yeah, you can get it with alcohol without popping bottles. Because we are all loaded with yeast. Loaded with yeast. And who told us to do that? got to question everything, even the basic stuff. Where we get that from? Why is bread such a normal part of our diet? The FDA. Not just the FDA, because the FDA is a creation. That has a start date. That's a biz organization with a start date. Where did bread come from? Did your ancestors eat bread Bible. every day? The damn Bible. Before the Bible. Where did bread come from? Europe. We did not eat bread. Think about that. We did not even need to cook stuff. You gotta just think. We don't need just put the science down for a second. Put the science down for a second. I need y'all to just visualize this. Right? We're from the tropics. The equator. Food is everywhere. No, literally everywhere. It's growing out of the ground everywhere. It's falling off the trees everywhere. It's coming off the bushes everywhere. Most of the bushes you can even eat also. Where did the psychology come in place where we started to look at one another or the animals and think, hmm, maybe I should eat one of those. <laughs> you gotta think like that. Why did, where did that thought even arise at? Why would we think about that? Without getting offended, we have to be able to look at ourselves honestly in the mirror. Now, we like to take care of our business, but technically, we like to reduce business so we don't have nothing to take care of. We like to have a good time, laugh, have sex, sleep, eat. That's, that's our shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we into. Relaxing and having a good time. We are peaceful people by nature. So with food falling off the trees, like we got to walk over it on the ground. It's coming out the ground. Every why would we chase some shit down, <laughs> jump on top of it, fight because I'm trying to kill it, so it's trying to kill me, and then I got the... What the... Who the hell's doing that? Who's doing that? Why would I do all that? And in order for me to chase some shit, think about this, I have to run past all kinds of shit that I could be eating. Why would I do that? 
that would only take place if my people are from a place where none of those options are available. There is no food growing on trees, out of the ground, off the bushes. Ice. There's nothing around to eat except each other. And the first thing that comes through that's not us is done. <laughs> Period. Wolf, rabbit, fox, bird, dog, lion, cat, elephant, whatever. If it's not even other tribes, other niggas, hey. <laughs> Clans, whatever you call them. Groups. Anybody. If it's not us, it's getting eaten. That's where the idea to cook things came in at. Because we're eating things that are loaded with bacteria and fungus, so now we have to put fire to them to try to kill the things in it that's going to kill us from eating it. But you didn't even need to do that when you was eating off the tree and out the ground and out the bushes. You didn't have to cook that stuff, it's already straight. There's no yeast and stuff in there. People would say, well, Minister, no, the yeast grows on the grapes. It grows on the grapes. Yeah, but inside the grape seed, it kills the yeast. So even if I was to eat a grape with some yeast on it, with natural, big, chunky grape seeds in it, it's going to neutralize the yeast, and I'm just going to get the rest of the stuff. That's why the grape seed is taken out. You got seedless grapes now, so the yeast can grow in you. and multiply. Because what do yeast need to multiply? Sugar and alcohol. Nitrogen. And so we got it. Yeast don't even need air to produce. Well, well actually, they, they, they do need the air, and that's how they make alcohol. Because they'll scavenge. Like when we look at the uh, formula to these things, there's oxygen always tied up in molecules. So what yeast are able to do is break things down and cleave the oxygen out of it. So they actually take the oxygen from carbohydrates from the sugar molecules and they eat that. And they excrete alcohol. So they turn people into brewers. They turn you into a brewery. You're brewing alcohol inside your body. People ask me about that. Minister, what's up with the brewer's yeast? I don't know, nigga, you a brewer? <laughs> Simple. What about nutritional yeast? I, are you trying to make alcohol, brother? If you're trying to make some alcohol, then hey, that's the right way to go. That's what health is about. Knowing your body, trying to get to your goal. Right? So, here's the sofa cycle. Your body has a sofa cycle. <coughs> right? Your body's trying to get rid of this stuff. Right? These are one of the compounds that comes out in your farts, your duty, your urine. That's why they smell. And the more of this stuff is in there, the more it smells. Right? Cysteine, cystathionone, homocysteine, methathionine. Right? We're going to come back to this, and I'm going to show you where the bridge is between the sulfur cycle and the ammonia cycle. And this is where the problem's coming in. All right. Now, alanine transports ammonia from muscles to the liver via the glucose alanine transport. This is a byproduct of using your muscles, period. Anytime you use muscles, you're working out, you're exercising, you're producing high amounts of ammonia than average. So your liver and your kidney have to be in shape to get rid of that ammonia and those nitrogen-based compounds, or they will lodge in your body via uric acid crystals, or as a liquid, they'll hit the bloodstream, go up to the brain, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right? And when this, when the, the first thing that happens when the body starts to get overwhelmed is we get chronal, chronic muscle breakdown. <coughs> this is what's happening in a lot of our athletes. And this is what I was talking about on the radio yesterday. You know, sometimes we got to put the science down and just look at the common sense. If we look at boxing, 
if we look at football, if we look at basketball, the major sports that we into, as the years go by, they make rules and put rules in place to make the game safer. If they're doing that, which we know they are, because boxers used to have almost no gloves on and box for an indefinite amount of rounds. They get to somebody falls out, the fight's going. Football players used to have almost a leather hat on. Right? So as the time goes by, the equipment changes, the rules change, even in basketball. Back in the days, you can hand check. Now you can't even touch them. You just got to like, watch them go by you. As soon as you... And now, depending on who it is, if you just even look like your defense too good. Right? So then that means if there's less contact, the sports are played a less amount of time. There's less physicality. Common sense tells me that there should be less injury. How come there's not less injury? The injury rate is still the same, and in some cases it's going up. How is that? If the games are getting safer, why is the injury rate staying consistent? Because your body's getting weaker. Your body's getting weaker. And we don't know why, so we don't know how to fix it. So it's not just a matter of going to the gym or taking the herbs. It's a matter of the combination. We have a lot of that going on in the conscious community. People think that if they just get the herbs, they're going to be straight. No. If you don't get some exercise popping, it doesn't matter what plants you eat. You're going to be in trouble. Period. Somebody asked about the... Um, the amputation, somebody. As your veins get further away from your heart, they get smaller. <clears throat> so in your hands and in your feet, you have the smallest capillaries on the body outside the ones you have in your teeth. So it is very easy for those things to get blocked up and nothing to be able to go by. That's how the clock forms because they're so thin. They're finer than a hair on your head. As soon as them things get blocked up, it's no, they're so thin that there's no surgery that can go in there and repair them. Period. It's over. I just got to cut that joint off. Hey. Get some get right. <laughs> get some act right. All right? Take this thing serious. A lot, a lot more of us put more emphasis into organizing our lives around watching TV shows than we do exercise. And I listen to it all the time. People tell me, you know, oh man, you know, as I got the job and the children and, you know, I, I just don't have the time. Meanwhile, they know everything that happened on Love and Hip Hop. They know exactly what's happening with the new form of gossip, AKA conscious community. Right? They seen every minister inky lecture. They seen polite arguing with the some the white folks. <laughs> right? How you got time to watch that and you don't got time to exercise? I prefer you stop watching me to go get exercise. Or be smart. Exercise while watching the video. Why are you sitting still watching TV? Use the TV as your timing mechanism. Because they done, they done got you already. They done put commercials on YouTube now. <laughs> right? So every time the commercial come up, oh, 10 jumping jacks. Boop. Every time the commercial come up, 10 push-ups. You don't have to be trying to get buffed. But you have to do the exercise to clean the tissues, to get the circulation going. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment. As far as like exercise and while you watch the videos, if you have an exercise ball, that's like the best thing you could possibly do like, sit on. Sit on the arm. Listen, we black down. folks, our minds are so creative. Once we got the direction, we're going to create ways to do it. We're going to create ways to do it. That's a that's an excellent thing to do. Use the exercise ball. Get that core working. 
get that core working while you're watching the videos. Now, this is an article from a laboratory in, um, well, it's in Europe. We'll put it like that. But I have it there so that you see that it's just not Minister Inky explaining these things to you. It talks about ammonia toxicity to the brain and to creatine. Now, why that's important? Because creatine is how all of your muscles repair themselves. Creatine is how your muscles repair themselves. So if your body is flooded with nitrogen-based compounds, i.e. franks, hamburgers, chicken, fish, meat. Meat. That's the number one source of nitrogen in your body. Your body is not going to be able to utilize creatine. It's going to inhibit your muscle formation, repair, growth, and endurance. This is why when you see the big bodybuilders, they load it up on chicken cutlets, turkey cutlets, steak, and all that. But they're also spending $200 a month on creatine supplements. They got to replace what they neutralize, but they don't know what they're doing. They don't know they're chasing their tail. They don't know that your body naturally produces creatine from the mitochondrial production. Creatine is naturally produced in your body. Uh, you mean as, as more as more mitochondria is being created, more creatine you, more creatine can be produced. That's right. In fact, that's the difference between strength, mitochondrial genesis. How much? Because remember, strength is force. It's a, it's a generation of electric force. Period. How much force can you generate with your muscles? That is electric. That's electricity. Your muscles only do two things, contract and relax, based on electric impulses, period. So the more electricity you can generate, the more force your muscles can generate, period. And that's based on mitochondrial genesis. That's what's producing that electricity in your body. That's the, that's the reason why you have people that do calisthenics are a lot stronger than people that lift weights and get really big and bulky. Because although the weights increase the size of the muscle, it doesn't increase the rate of mitochondrial genesis. So you're not getting a lot more electricity output. You're just getting a lot of muscle growth. So when you pop up on the over-the-counter creatine, of the one that you get from the GNC store, also combined with the creatine that's already created in your body, is that what causes the vein to combust? Or for people to um, well, a lot of times the vascularity just comes from um, lack of fat. You know what I'm saying? Because the veins are already there. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's some stuff that people in the that are in the business of working out, personal trainers and, and professional bodybuilders and sports, they know certain things, but they just don't tell it to people with average John Q. Public because then it cuts their money. So, for instance, as a personal trainer. Abs is the dream, like that's the gold mine. So you sell people on, they gotta do all this crazy shit to get abs. Any third grader knows everybody has abs. How, how else do you digest food if you don't have abs? Everyone has abs. Only thing is, is some people's abs are covered by fat. So you don't need to do a thousand crunches and all this crazy stuff to develop abs, they're already there. What you have to do is do the things that removes the fat off of them so they can show. I learned that from a model that used to work out in the same gym with me. He was like, no, why do you think all models know that you don't eat before a photo shoot? The night before they have a photo shoot, they don't eat at all. Why? Because they want their abs to show as much as possible. This is how you have actors and things like that. They be looking out of shape on Friday, then Tuesday they doing a photo shoot with Abby. Like, what the? How'd that happen? They just drank water for two, three days, so the fat removed off the abdominal, and then you can see. It's easy. Right? So, the body funnels ammonia out of the muscles and tissues into urine and feces, blah, blah, blah. Anything that inhibits creatine and phosphocreatine inhibit muscle, all right, which is the whole of the body. You need to know that. 
People like, oh, I'm not into that bodybuilding thing. I, I'm not into all that muscle. Eh. Then you're not into health. Your heart is a muscle. Your brain is a muscle. Your liver is a muscle. Your kidneys are muscles. So if you're not building muscle, maintaining muscle, then you're not maintaining your organs. Organs. Period. There's no two ways about it. So in your mind, you can start thinking all kinds of shit if you want to. You don't exercise, nigga, you, you're going to be unhealthy. Period. There's no way to get around it, people. <laughs> I'm telling you. Black folks like they're allergic to exercise. That slavery did a number on us, boy. We like, I ain't getting ready to do no work. <laughs> Free? Free work? Y'all would just get up and start busting the sweat like, yeah. You're getting life out of it. There are things that have a higher value than cash. We already have tons of millionaires and billionaires that are black. But why aren't we building any black infrastructure? Because we're stupid. By the time we get comfortable with whatever fortune we amass, we're already trading it all back to pharmaceutical companies. The athletes look terrible after they stop playing sports. All of them are giving their money back to the pharmaceutical companies, except for the ones that are making deals with the pharmaceutical companies, like Dominique Wilkins. Hey, I'll promote your products as long as you give me mine free. Because he's concentrated on living with type 2 diabetes. He's going to live with it. He's going to teach you how to live with it. Like, is this shit cool? Are niggas what? Are we going places to learn how to live with disease? Are we buying books and magazines to learn how to live with disease? What? We're losing our minds. Live with the disease. You can leave. I, I was in the supermarket, and I'm gonna lie, there was a diabetes magazine. I said, yo, this is the Twilight Zone. <laughs> and on the, the magazine, the big article was, you too can live with diabetes. I was like, oh, this is the biggest Jedi mind trick ever. Because people are so interested in that, they're buying it. And you don't realize you're buying into the concept. Yeah, I can, I can. Let me, baby, let me just grab one of these because I want to read up on this. You can, you can live with diabetes. You didn't even know about it. You didn't even know. You can live with diabetes. Let's live with it together. Let's show you how to do this, baby. We're going to live with diabetes. What? Shit crazy. Right? Derek Fell. Yeah. Derek Fell. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. But he stays out of the game. He can't play a pussy either. White muscle disease. Now, this is slick because white muscle disease is something that they only diagnose vet veterinarians do that. So when animals don't have selenium and copper, all the muscle tissue starts to turn white, get hard, calcify, and the animals die. When black folks don't have selenium and copper, the muscle tissue starts to turn white, get hard, and they die. And they just tell you, that, you know, you die from unknown causes. We don't know what happened to him. Like, wait a minute, what do you mean you don't know what happened to me? You're diagnosing the same thing in animals all the time. But why? We gotta go back to that source. Some people don't have a selenium requirement. And they know that you do. So as long as they leave this out in the food, muscle degeneration, AKA organ degeneration, is always going to be a process that's happening in you all the time. Period. There's no two ways around it. And we stave it off when we're working out. Because as we're working out, we increase the process of our muscles being able to send all those poisonous compounds to the liver and kidney to flush them. But when we don't do that, they accumulate. So this is what happens to the animals because they're not exercising. 
Cows aren't getting on the pull-up bar. They're not doing no push-ups. They're just walking around, eating, laying down, getting up, shitting, <laughs> walking around, eating. Maybe they'll have a little sex. Back to eating, laying down. The same thing we're doing! <laughs> The same thing we're doing. Right? So this is this is that this is that yeast process. This is how this is how the yeast actually create the alcohol. But I know my time is ticking. Right? This is why all of our guys, you know, they gotta make that deal. You want to get famous, you're going to have to sell your people some alcohol, baby. Get that alcohol popping. Right? And I like to remind people of one slick thing here. You know, I'm going to see who's been watching Menace to Inky videos. <laughs> what is it that I like to remind people about alcohol? What do you see here? Everybody, what do you see here? Who knows about Inky Vision? Let me see if y'all got some Inky Vision. What y'all see? What did I see in this article that made me have to take a picture of it? And put it on the big screen so everybody can see it. Now with our black folks. Boom. Spirits. You see, they, they changed the name on you real quick so you, you didn't know what's going on. All of the liquor stores used to be called Wines and Spirits. Why? Wines and spirits. Correct. You invite other spirits into your body with this alcohol. So that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother lecture. But there's a reason why if you get too drunk with alcohol, you'll black out and do a whole bunch of things and you won't remember. What happened? Because that technically it wasn't you. It really is spirit possession. Correct. It is. So every so often they'll slip up and just put that right in there. Famous faces ride for spirit brands. I'm like, mm -mm -mm. So let's take it back to the origin. Just so you can see, we talk about Kemet. I don't see anybody. So I, you know, I said I'm going to make it me. That talks about Kemet that is promoting the exercise. Because that's what they, that's all they did out there. And these things were rituals. You could not be a pharaoh. You could not be anybody of importance in the community and Egyptian culture without exercising. It was ritual practice. Ritual was working out. It was ritual to work out. All the high priests were working out. The high priests were not little fat, out of shape men. They were doing yoga too. Correct. They were definitely doing yoga. Yoga was a part of the regimen. This is the origin of baseball. Right? We need to see this. This is the origin of baseball. Right? And this is why a lot of our athletes turn to different drugs and things like that as their careers start to decline. Because as an athlete, they don't know that these exercise routines that they are practicing for 10, 20, 30 years are actually ritual practices and they're opening up their body to energies that they're not aware of. And they're trying to use synthetic means to, to keep those things going. So like, when he got caught up with some, some substances, right, that's what we're gonna say, the media tried to attack herbs and say, wait a minute, this man was on herbs and this that. I said, wait, what? They found cocaine and everything 
else in his system. Nothing made it to the article but herbs. <laughs> Gotta watch the attack, boy. Gotta watch the attack. All right. So, the Melanin Code of Silence. You know, I went through all the college textbooks. In fact, in the God Complex course, that's what we do. We actually use the textbooks from college with their health courses. So if you graduate from college as a, a, a nutritionist, a dietitian, a phys ed teacher, etc., etc., we have those very same textbooks that we teach out of in the God Complex, and that's how we compare and contrast holistic science to what's being taught in colleges right now. Right? So no textbook in school is going to talk about this. There is a lockdown, melanin code of silence. Now here is where the ammonia cycle blends in with the sulfur cycle. Right here. This right here is your ammonia, NH3. This is your ammonia, NH3. This is where your sulfur cycle combines with the ammonia cycle. For those that took the pictures earlier, I told you we was coming back to this. Now I want to jump down and get to some specifics on diabetes in the brain. And then we're going to take some Q&A because I don't want to spend too much time. Ooh, damn, I can't skip all that. All right, hold on. We just got to go fast. <laughs> don't let me talk too damn much. All right. So, erectile dysfunction. We got to know about that. This is a problem for everybody. Men don't like it and the women don't like it even more. It's a byproduct of too much ammonia. Too much ammonia. Once the body begins to produce too much ammonia, usually hypoxia sets in, which is a lack of oxygen getting into the tissues. Remember, nitrogen and oxygen compete for space. Ammonia is a nitrogen-based compound. So once these tissues get flooded with ammonia, there's not going to be any room for oxygen. And it's the oxygen that gives you that, that, that salute, right? You got to get that salute popping, right? So they use nitric oxide to give you that synthetic salute. That's what your blue pills are and all the other over-the-counter things for erectile dysfunction is, right? But what we should be doing is not purchasing over-the-counter pills for erectile dysfunction we should be taking this as a red flag to let us know that our liver and kidney are in trouble. Our liver and kidney are not able to excrete the ammonia the way they're supposed to, right? So, all right, come on. Y'all just gotta get the get in the class, damn it. I, I don't know what to tell y'all, man. So I can't go through all this stuff. Um, I do want to get to, okay, let me, let me just touch on these guys real quick. Let me touch on these guys real quick. All right. Now, going back to Kimmet. Going back to Kimmet. Uh, there's a mnemonic device that talks about the Kamenu. That's one of the reasons why the website is KamenuInc.com. Right? This was a, a major source of insight for me. When they deal with the four sets of twins that control all of creation, they're actually talking about the histones inside your body. This is what they look like. This is your DNA wound up tightly around those histones. We just saw that in the animations. Right? Now, here's the problem. Aging and sickness, not just aging, so we got to understand that anti-aging is health because aging is degradation of the body's tissues, the body degrading slowly but surely, breaking down, deteriorating, atrophy, all those synonyms. The histones that control and regulate the DNA 
these chemicals that our body's being flooded with, let me see that I skip. These chemicals that our bodies are being flooded with, maybe I did. All right, it's all right. These chemicals that our bodies are being flooded with all attach themselves to the histones. All of these synthetic chemicals attack your histones. They go beyond your DNA. They attack what writes the information into the DNA, which is the histones. So that's where the codes come from. This is your computer programmers, your histones, your four sets of twins. As they get flooded with chemicals, they can no longer clearly write code into the DNA. DNA can no longer clearly replicate itself. As flaws in replication occur, your body starts to break down and degenerate. Now, knowing that in advance, obviously your body's going to have mechanisms in place to make sure that that doesn't happen. Introducing sirtuin enzymes. These are the set of enzymes in your body that are there to clean your histones. To clean your histones. Or detox. That's the popular word we like, detox. Man, I'm looking for that detox. Okay, well, this is the detox. This is how you detox your DNA. You get the histonic. Or you can get the $15,000 package from white folks. <laughs> or the low, low. With the, the lowest package, they got $7,000. <laughs> no, I could not believe that. Like, yo, black folks is crazy. If I tell niggas a hundred dollars, they like, Inky, come on, man. A hundred dollars for them little drops. Put them little drops. You know they want disrespected. Little, little. They had the little with the, the them little drops. Come on now. Like, well, white folk got half the size of this bottle. They drink five hundred. Half the size of this bottle. Little drops. <laughs> Because these things clean the histones, which controls your epigenetics. So before we get into the liver, the pancreas, your muscle tissue, the adipose tissue, your heart, cancer. Before we get into how the sirtuin enzymes prevent all of the breakdown of these things. Your neurological function, inflammation. Before we even get into that. Because we're supposed to be the conscious community. Epigenetics. What you're doing to your body, you're not only doing to you, you're doing to every generation to come after you. This is what you got to understand. You're doing it to every generation to come after you. So that somebody can pop up 10 years later and say, oh, this shit runs in your family. And then you're going to take hook, line, and sinker because you don't know the science yourself. Have to go along with what they say. You don't have a choice. You don't know. If you don't learn the science, you have to trust somebody. I'm from 158th Street. I don't trust none of you niggas. <laughs> Especially not with my health. White, black, black, red, whatever. Candy stripe. I don't care what color you are. I need to know. Because at the end of the day, I'm going in a box alone. You're going in a box alone. So you need to know. You're in charge. Nobody's going to, nobody's responsible for fixing your problem but you. Period. And the problem with that is you got saddled with a whole bunch of problems because nobody took care of it before you. Your mama didn't fix it and your daddy didn't fix it. So they passed you a bunch of crazy shit along with the chicken and the steak and the cow's milk. And the eggs. And the cheese. And the alcohol. Because we watched them drinking it so we wanted to drink some. And the cigarettes and the joints. Because they told you to go dip the ashtray in the toilet and you... <laughs> Boy, what happened? No, I, I was smoke got my eye. 
Oh, yeah. Epigenetics. These are the enzymes that's responsible for cleaning and maintaining the histones and DNA performance. But guess what? They're not activated. They're not activated. Let me see if I got that up here. How they become this? Damn. Oh, boom, it's, it's coming right now. Okay, yeah. Beautiful. Sometimes I'll be... Yeah, okay, you're right on time. This is what deactivates them. Ammonia and tobacco. Ammonia and tobacco. Minister, well, where do we get ammonia from? When we add large sources of nitrogen to the waters in our body, which is what we're made of, water. So once we add a lot of nitrogen, we're going to produce ammonia. That's what ammonia is, nitrogen and hydrogen. Urine. Urine, correct. Smell ammonia, smell a baby's old diaper. You let me know if you can tell the difference. Hey, some people, when you start, when you haven't worked out in a while, the first thing you're going to know is when you start working out, you're going to smell that ammonia in your sweat. Mm -hmm. That means you was just on the verge of death, but you just start working out <laughs> just in time. <laughs> just in time. Right? But here's the crazy thing about this. Right? Here's the crazy thing about this. Right? Now, people don't know this. You know, I, I talk a lot about the white blood cells. But the urge to smoke comes from white blood cells. Right? But that's not why. That's, this, that's not uh, as pertinent to the conversation as this. I thought it was true. The urge to smoke cigarettes comes from white blood cells. And here's the scientific paper to prove it. Every time you take a puff, you increase the white blood cell count in your body. So they want you to puff to help them with replication. All the chemicals in there are conducive to white blood cell activity. But it gets even deeper. Because all of these things, let me take it back. Tobacco plus ammonia equals... Let's do that all together. Come on, guys. <laughs> Tobacco plus ammonia equals nice. Everybody's got smartphones. So you don't have to take my word for it. This ain't a debate. You, yeah, I'm a exposed minister. No. Just look it up. Just type in niacin. See how, see how synthetic niacin is synthesized. Synthetic niacin, what they use to make your vitamin pills, is synthesized from tobacco and ammonia. Now, this is where it gets criminal. This is where it gets genocidic, genocidal. Because all of these things is fortified with niacin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of them. All of them. Yep. All of them. Loaded. All of them loaded. So, from the time we can eat, from the time we can eat, the toddler food, the infant food, the girl, all that shit fortified with vitamins, a.k.a. niacin on deck, it is inactivating the enzymes that's used to keep you young. Population control on a massive scale. From the first time you eat anything besides your mama's breast milk, you already getting attacked. Period. Men, listen, you got to find a way, brothers. You have these women get pregnant, you got to do what you got to do to keep them breastfeeding. You're putting the job on you. Because if they got to go to work and breastfeed, then the, a lot of breastfeeding going to get, it ain't going to go down. So you got to find a way. You got to reprioritize, restructure the household, damn it. We might have to turn off the cable bill, the cell phone, because you got to quit work. You got to, you got to stay home. I don't know. Something got to happen. But I need you breastfeeding. Period. These babies got to get at least two years worth of breastfeeding. Just minimum. Only breastfeeding. And the milk is going to have the telomerase <laughs> in it if 
the mom is eating obviously the right way. That's the, that's the second part. What is mom eating? Because if mom is eating McDonald's and Burger King, then obviously it's Burger King and McDonald's smoothie coming out of <laughs> But from the time we're born, we're loading ourselves up with these things. Loading ourselves up. All of the beer. All of the beer. Fortified with nicotine. The beer is fortified with nicotine. When I was in 11th grade, I used to smoke cigarettes like they was going out of style. When I got out of high school, that's when I stopped smoking the cigarettes. But anytime I went to a club, if I even smelled beer, forget having a sip of some alcohol, if I even just smelled some, I had to smoke a cigarette. That's why smoking, man. Uh, drinking makes you want to smoke. But now you know why. Yeah. Because the nicotine is in the alcohol. Especially beer. It's loaded. The flush from niacin. So they'll tell you, Niacin caused you to get that, that flush. That burning? That burning, that, that tingling all over your skin. Why? That's white blood cells. <laughs> Filling up the layers of skin with histamine. Because the white blood cells, when you, eat, when you take that, that niacin in, the white blood cells get real thick with histamine. And your body has a nasty reaction to histamine. It's histamines that cause itch. Rash, eczema, allergies, asthma. That's why when you have any of those problems and you go to the hospital, they give you antihistamine. It's our buddies. I'm our buddies. People are like, man, it's the I got eczema. What's going on? We need to deal with the white blood cells. They're like, no. That's part of my immune system. Of course they're not causing me any trouble. Sure you vegan out? Okay. <laughs> All of these things loaded with niacin. And I, it was a, a it's a shame that most people still today, 2016, don't know the difference between drink. Punch, <laughs> juice, and uh, what's this? This is another one. Cocktail. Boom. I'm like, yo, none of that's real. Only juices. <laughs> Cocktail, drink, punch, all those is like chemical mixtures. Those are not juice. That's why when you look on the back of a cocktail, it'll tell you 7% juice. 11% juice. They tricking you. And then they play games with words to confuse folks because we got short attention span. So they'll put 100% natural on the front, then you see 100%, and you automatically think that 100% means 100% juice is not even the same thing. Right. So, here's what chemicals do. Now, let's get the definition of the word Ah, Vine Vera. So you can Google Vine Vera. You can Google the Vine Vera. <laughs> Wait. Just put it on the for everybody. That's right. One ounce. <laughs> One point eight three full ounces. One ounce, five hundred ounce. Vine Vera. Wow. And I'm going to tell you, this is the science behind this, right? Chemicals. You got to break this stuff down so you understand what this stuff means so that you can get what it was trying to be communicated. There's a thing called being illiterate where you can't read. Then there's a thing called functional illiterates where you can read and write, but you don't know what you're reading and writing. Chemical. Adjective. Chem. Describing black. Ickle, suffix, meaning pertaining to or affecting. Let's get that. Let's get that. 
Damn. Types of damage to histones caused by chemicals. Cellular atrophy, division obsessed cells. What is that? Cell. Immortal cells. Right in between these two is what? Cancer. Mitochondrial mutations. Intracellular junk.